In this episode, we're ranking VV vehicles from worst to best based on their top speed performance. What's going on, ladies and gents? Welcome to Collectors Gone Digital. My name is Josh, and on today's episode, we got 14 different cars we're talking about from in real life cars like Lamborghinis and DeLoreans to animated vehicles like Pixar's Lightning McQueen and Deadpool's Chimichanga's truck. So, without further ado, grab a drink, grab a snack, sit back, relax, and enjoy. Now, I'm not going to lie, guys, uh, I might be missing some on today's list. I, I really tried my best to uh, remember as much as I could. There's just so many vehicles to keep track of now. But but first up on today's list is going to be the Cubo from No Time to Die, James Bond. Now, although I don't have much on it, uh, it was designed specifically for the film. The scene was also done all in one take. And the top speed of the boat they used in the film, keeping in mind they did make some modifications, but uh, was around 25 to 30 knots which is 29 to 35 miles per hour or 46 to 56 kilometers per hour. So the Cubo is going to be one of the slower vehicles on VV. Now next up is going to be an honorable mention here and it's going to be Mater. I don't actually have a slide for Mater or McQueen because those two characters are just so well known. I didn't really want to take up time, but the lovable character has a top speed of 35 miles per hour or 56 kilometers per hour. Now next up on the list, we're going to have Deadpool's Chimichanga truck. And that's right guys, I researched the speed of food trucks. But the average speed of a food truck is typically between 60 to 70 miles per hour or 97 to 113 kilometers. These vehicles are generally built on a standard commercial vehicle chassis, which are designed for both city and highway driving. The actual top speed can vary depending on the specific model, the vehicle's load, and its condition. So assuming the Deadpool isn't carrying a, a substantial amount of chimichangas here, you know, he's got a he's got a standard load. He's not going to any special events or anything. Deadpool can still be hitting those highway speeds, and he's number three on today's list. Next up, we got the Ecto-1 from Back... I was going to say Back to the Future. Ghostbusters, my apologies. But this vehicle is based on the 1959 Cadillac Miller Meteor Ambulance slash hearse, and that's because it was used for both. But get this, the car was originally black with purple and white strobe lights. But because they had visibility issues on the camera while recording, the color of the car was changed to white and the strobe lights to red. Here's something that's also pretty funny, and I try to include things that we haven't talked about in, in previous episodes. There's a point in the film where a comment is made about how the car needs repairs. And this is because the actual prop used in the film was actually in such poor condition. In fact, such bad condition that it literally died during a scene on the Brooklyn Bridge. And this caused significant traffic issues and fines for the production team. Now, basing this on the 1959 Cadillac, uh, the top speed was 80 to 90 miles per hour or 129 to 145 kilometers per hour. Next up and faster than the Ecto-1, we have the DeLorean. So some cool things about this car, uh, it's made from SS-304 stainless steel, the same material used in kitchen counters and kegs. Now the doors do go up on this car and believe it or not, they're meant more than just for show. They were actually designed to make it easier to get in and out of parking spots and cram parking lots. Now the DMC DeLorean, not the one from the movie, uh, it was actually powered with a 2.8 liter V6 engine, which was quite underwhelming considering this car was supposed to be futuristic. Only 130 horsepower and it went from 0 to 60 in 10 seconds, which in the car world and for the time when this dropped was quite a long time. Now the DMC model's top speed is 130 miles per hour, 209 kilometers. But as many people know, the top speed in the film is 88 miles or 142 kilometers. 
Now, throughout its production run, there were 9,000 made, and there was actually a plan to produce 100 gold-plated DeLoreans, but only three were actually made. Next up, we're heading back to No Time to Die, James Bond, but this time for a motorcycle, still not cars yet. First the Q-Boat, now the bike. But in collaboration with Triumph, there were two editions of this bike released. So the Tiger 900 Bond Edition, which was limited to 250 worldwide. And then there's the Scrambler 1200 Bond Edition, which was actually inspired directly by the movie bike. Now, fun fact, one of these custom-built Scrambler 1200 XE bikes used in No Time to Die was auctioned for charity before the film. And this sale played a significant role in the film's pre-credit sequence. The bike sold for 138,600 pounds. Top speed is around 120 miles per hour or 193 kilometers. Now we're sticking with James Bond here for one of the brands he's most known for, and that's Aston Martin. In this case, the DB5. Now this car is powered by a 4.0 liter inline six engine. It produces 282 horsepower. It goes from zero to 60 in eight seconds and it runs a top speed of 145 miles or 233 kilometers per hour. One thing I love, love, love about the old school Aston Martins is that they're hand built, this car included. In fact, each car actually took about 1200 man hours to complete. While the car was designed by Aston Martin's in-house team, it was also influenced by the Italian design house Zegato. And for those that don't know much about Aston Martin, they do actually have more recent collaborations with Zegato as well. I'll make sure to toss a more recent example on screen. The Aston Martin DB5 was produced between 1963 and 1965. Within these two years, the company produced only 1,059. I say only, but they're hand built. So that's actually quite impressive in two years. Now, it won't take you guys long to realize that Lamborghini absolutely owns this list. And our first Lambo today is going to be the 350 GT. So this was the first car ever produced by Lamborghini. And it was powered by a 3.5 liter V12 engine. Now this car was capable of 400 horsepower in its prototype form. Ferruccio, who was the creator of this car, asked Bizzarini, who was the creator of the engine for the car, to actually detune it for more reliability and smoother performance. And so it went from 400 horsepower all the way down to 280. So to me, it's funny that the prototype for Lambo's first ever car ends up being faster than the car they end up releasing. Typically, it's the other way around. So the top speed was around 158 miles per hour or 254 kilometers. Next up, we got another Lambo and plenty more to talk about. The Lamborghini Countach. So we're going from the first ever Lamborghini produced to the first ever Lamborghini with scissor doors. It's got a 4.0 liter V12 that produces 375 horsepower. It would later be upgraded to a 5.2 liter engine with 455 horsepower. And it's got a top speed of 193 miles or 310 kilometers per hour. Now it is gonna be one of the first supercars to place its V12 engine longitudinally or lengthwise in the rear. Talk about a tongue twister, geez. And if you guys have ever watched any reviews about this car online, uh, you will have learned that it is quite a handful. There's no power steering, no traction control, no electronic aids. It's loud, it's hot, and it takes a lot of skill to drive. So in order to back the car up, what you need to do is you need to open the scissor door. You need to sit on the side of the scissor door and look back, kind of like you're, you're parking like a lawnmower. And over its 16 year production run, only 2000 were produced. Next up, we have the first Lambo to drop on Vivi, the Huracan Evo STO. Now this car produces 631 horsepower from a V10 and it goes zero to 60 in three seconds. It was inspired by track only Lamborghini models, specifically the Huracan Super Trofeo and the GT3 Evo. 75% of its body is carbon fiber. And that's gonna be one of the many ways and one of the main ways actually uh, that these car manufacturers reduce weight in their cars. Now, when it comes to an impressive engineering feat for this car, uh, Lamborghini actually combined the hood, the fenders, and the bumper into a single carbon fiber piece. So everything that you're kind of seeing in the front there, it's all one. Now, in my opinion, this is an absolutely stunning car. It's actually one of Lamborghini's most successful cars ever. 
and his top speed is 193 miles per hour, or 310 kilometers. Next up, and that's right, if you're shocked, I was too, we have an older gen Lamborghini uh, outperforming a newer gen Lamborghini. We have the Lamborghini Diablo, which was their first production car to break 200 miles per hour. Now it's powered by a 5.7 liter naturally aspirated V12 engine. Those don't get made anymore. It's got 485 horsepower in its earlier models, but it was later increased to 595 horsepower with the GT version. Its top speed is 202 miles per hour or 325 kilometers per hour. And just like the Countach, it's free from modern electronic aids like traction control and ABS. Now another honorable mention on today's list, and that's right, Pixar's outperforming Lamborghini here. We got Lightning McQueen up here at 322 kilometers per hour, 200 miles, which I just realized is right behind the Diablo, not in front, but either way, they're neck and neck. And if you guys are wondering, this is based off of the highest top speed that's ever been captured by uh, Lightning McQueen in a Pixar film before. Now coming in as the second fastest vehicle on VV right now, we have the Lamborghini Murcielago SV. Now this car is an absolute monster, a 6.5 liter V12 engine, and they were offered in front and rear wheel drive models. It's got a top speed of 211 miles per hour or 340 kilometers per hour, 661 horsepower, and it goes zero to 60 in 3.2 seconds. So it has a faster top speed than the Huracan Evo, but a slower zero to 60 by 0.2 seconds. During its production run, there was 186 units made. And because we're talking about the SV here, which is the racing version of the standard version that was originally released, this SV model actually shed around 220 pounds or 100 kilograms compared to the standard Murcielago. And this was done using carbon fiber. Now the fastest official vehicle on VV as of right now is the Lamborghini Aventador SVJ. It's powered with a naturally aspirated 6.5 liter V12 engine. It's got 759 horsepower. It goes zero to 60 in 2.8 seconds. It's got a top speed of 217 miles per hour, 350 kilometers per hour. Only 900 were ever made. And it currently holds the Nürburgring lap record for a production car at just under six minutes and 45 seconds. This is gonna be one of the most modern Lambos they have on the platform alongside the Evo STO. It's also a V12, so it makes sense why it's at the top of the list. But those are 14 vehicles ranked from worst to best based on their top speed performance. Ladies and gents, that is gonna to conclude today's episode. I really, really hope you enjoyed. You guys may have also noticed that the structure of today's thumbnail is also different. Uh, and that's because I'm starting to make them inside Blender now to uh, hopefully improve the quality for you guys. So any feedback around those is greatly appreciated as well. But if you guys enjoy the content, make sure to like and subscribe. Comment down below what you want to see in a future episode. And as for our next, I'll catch you then.